Zero accounting software. Purchase order form or PO form. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Here we are in the custom Zero homepage we set up in a prior presentation. I'm going to zoom in a bit by holding down control and scrolling up on the mouse wheel. Currently at 175%. Zoom in. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're gonna go into the demo company, but before we do, gonna reset the data just to note that you have the capacity to reset the data after entering transactions in the demo company, which is a great tool. So we're gonna do that. It will open up the demo company for us. I'm gonna hide this window up top. Typically, I would then open up the major financial statement reports now, that being the balance sheet and the income statement, and then have this tab on the left to be working in. But for this case, we're looking at the purchase order, which does not have an impact on the financial statements, the balance sheet and the income statement. So we will not do that this time. The purchase order can be located in the drop down here. It's one of our primary data input type forms. And it's a little bit different than most of the other forms, because remember, our end goal is to generate the financial statements from an accounting standpoint and obviously also to facilitate the purchase in the case of a purchase order. But just from an accounting standpoint, we're trying to build the balance sheet income statement and related reports. Most of these other forms are used to make the data input as easy as possible to then create the end financial statements. The purchase order is different because although it looks like the same kind of data input form, it being similar in look and feel to an invoice, for example, there, we, have, we don't actually have a financial transaction because it's just basically a request. So before we go into it, let's first just take a look at the flow that would be involved. I'm gonna go into a flow chart just to see the kind of flows that would be involved if we have a purchase order. So we would be looking at the vendor flow of things or the purchasing side of things or the expense side of things, you might call it. And we're expecting at the end of the process that we're going to be spending or cash going out uh, in this particular flow. We talked about this flow in terms of purchasing, say, expenses like utilities, for example, in which case we might just have a check type form or an electronic transfer, a decrease directly to the checking account to pay for expenses. Or we might have that accrual component using a bill entering this into the system, a bill, which to the zero system increases the accounts payable and then paying that off with in essence a type of check type form or decrease the checking account now we've got inventory involved if inventory involved you have a couple different options on how to handle inventory and this is what you really want to think about before you start setting up the accounting system you can either have a periodic system or a perpetual inventory system on a periodic inventory system you might decide that you're not going to track inventory within the accounting software within zero. You might say, I'm going to track it outside in say Excel or some other software. And then I will make periodic adjustments into uh, the accounting system at the end of the day, the end of the week and the end of the month. In other words, I'll record the purchases of inventory in the accounting system. I'll track the actual physical units of inventory outside of the system. I possibly will do a physical count at the end of the day, week, or month, and then determine how much of the inventory has been sold, beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory kind of calculation for cost of goods sold, and do a periodic adjustment. In that case, you, you, it's a little bit easier to, to not have to set up the inventory tracking within the system. But if you want the full perpetual inventory system in zero, then 
you're going to have to turn on, you're going to have to track the inventory and use inventory items within the system, which will not only record the purchase in terms of the account that will be affected, inventory, when you purchase the inventory, it will also record the sub-ledger tracking the units of inventory that you're purchasing. And then when you sell the inventory with like an invoice or something, then it's going to actually reduce the inventory account as well as the sub-ledger for the units of inventory sold. So in that case, you're, you might have a purchase order as well in the system. Note that you would only have a purchase order in the system if you have more leverage as the purchaser, in this case, of the inventory that you're later going to sell. Because uh, usually when you purchase something like online, you, you have to pay for it if you're an individual at the point of purchase. Like if you buy something from Amazon, even though you haven't got it, you typically pay for it at the point in time you're requesting what you want. But if you have more leverage and you're, say, going to a manufacturing company and you're ordering a thousand cups or something from China or something like that, a manufacturer, and they're going to send those over, maybe you can have a position where you request the cups, they send them over, and then they come with a box. You can imagine a box of thousand cups with a bill in it that you can then match the bill to the purchase order. In order to have a relationship like that, you have to have trust between the two companies so that they're willing to give you the, the goods before you know you bill it and so on. So that's where the purchase order comes into play. And that's why the purchase order doesn't have a financial transaction related to it because one, we're not paying for anything at the point of the purchase order. And two, we didn't get any inventory at the point of the purchase order. We're gonna get the inventory, we can imagine in a box in our warehouse full of cups at some future point with a bill in it that will enter at that point in time. So given that then, how do we track the purchase orders? How do we deal with the purchase orders? Well, we can enter the purchase orders, of course, here. You enter the purchase order. You would expect the next thing to happen is that you would then enter a bill would be the next thing in the flow that would happen. And then, of course, you would pay off the bill as, in essence, uh, you normally would at that point in time. And then to track the open purchase orders, we go into the business dropdown and we've got the purchase orders down here. Let's check that out going into the purchase orders. So up top, we could make a new purchase order up top. So this is just another way to get, I'm gonna go back again to the same area as with the plus button. So like most accounting softwares, there's multiple ways to get to the same area. I think zero is fairly streamlined that there's not too many ways. I think some softwares kind of go overboard in that there's too many ways to get to the same thing. It's almost confusing and it's taking up more space than maybe you need, but uh, zero is pretty, pretty streamlined that they don't, they don't, they don't are they not too redundant on that because any case. So now we've got the all items here. You've got the drafts. When you set up a purchase order in a draft, you've got the awaiting approval. So if you're going through a more like a longer approval process, you can add them for approval. Then you've got the approved items, which smaller companies, when you enter the purchase order, you might just enter it as approved up front. And then uh, then you've got the build items. So you can imagine the build items would be once you've uh, received the information for the purchase order, you're gonna have them be billed for, meaning the vendor who you're purchasing from has issued you a bill and you've entered it into the system. And typically the bill might be created from the data you put in to the purchase order. So if I go back to the approved items, let's just take a look at one that has been made here, drilling down on a purchase order. So we've got the information up top. We've got the uh, ABC, the contact information, the date, and let's look at it as if we're editing it so we can see it in an edit kind of format. So now we've got the contact, the date, the delivery date, the order number, if applicable, the reference, if applicable, the theme is standard. So the type of forms that you're going to be using to, and they will give you standard forms. You might be able to get into some custom formatting if you so choose purchase orders being a type of form that might be useful to do that, make it more customized that is because you're giving it to uh, someone else outside of the company. It's not just an internal form. US dollars, we're gonna be in uh, tax uh, inclusive on this one and then the item the description the quantity the unit price now now the item uh, might be something that we would have to set up so we might set up the items in order to be purchasing and tracking the inventory items the discount 
the account, uh, the tax rate, and the amount. Now note this looks a lot like uh, what you might see in like other types of forms like a bill or an invoice or something like that. And you would think, hey, there's a lot of numbers here. Wouldn't this have an impact on the financial statements, the balance sheet and the income statement? It looks like a kind of form that would, but it doesn't because it's just a request. It's like, it's kind of like an estimate form uh, if you've done with job, job costing where before you enter the invoice, you might have an estimate. So just because you made an estimate doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to invoice someone. It's going to be an estimate and it doesn't have any financial impact. This is similar. You expect the purchase order to be fulfilled, but you haven't actually done anything that requires the financial transactions in that you haven't actually paid anything and you haven't actually received the inventory. So no financial transaction It's the step before the financial transaction, which is when you connect the purchase order to the bill that we will have at a future point. And then down below, we've got then the delivery address, attention, uh, FOH, telephone number, de delivery instructions, if necessary, you got notes that you can add and, and add expected arrival and uh, more detail down below here uh, for the related activity that has taken place. So this is gonna be kind of like your history and so on. So I'm gonna go back up top. Let's go back and let's go back. And so, so then of course you can use these items. You can check off these items. You might check them multiple items off and then apply them as build, or you can print them, you can send them and you can copy, you can copy too. Now, oftentimes you would think that you might use the purchase order to basically create the bill. So when you have this copy to item here, oftentimes we would copy it to a bill because when you're gonna receive the goods, the thousand cups, for example, then you would, you would expect that that should match the purchase order and you can use the purchase order to pull over the same data into the bill uh, if you so choose. If you're gonna make another purchase order, then you can make another purchase order in that format and you can uh, you can pull it over to an invoice, which might be useful if you bought the cups, for example, custom for a particular customer. And now that you've received them, you're going to just roll them over into an invoice and turn around and sell them to the customer possibly that ordered them uh, custom for them. Let's go ahead and see if we can just enter a purchase order just for the fun of it. So I'm going to create a purchase order here. Let's make a purchase order. We're going to say the contact is AAA. Again, I'll just make another contact of AAA and the date. That's fine. Delivery, a delivery date. I'll keep that blank. I'm not going to put any reference. This is pre or pre filled the order number standard theme US dollars. I'm just going to say no tax on it. And then I'm going to choose here these t-shirts now note if I if I go to a couple of them like this item here they have it going to cost of goods sold and instead of an instead of an inventory account and if you have like a job cost type of system it might be more, it might be set up more likely to be kind of set up in that way meaning uh, when it pulls through to the bill it's not going to go into inventory but instead basically be expensed in the form of cost of goods sold but if you're just buying and selling things traditionally you would track the inventory and you'd be pulling it into something like putting it into the inventory account. Now, because I can see the account here, again, this makes me think, well, this is gonna result in me, uh, this is gonna result in me having a transaction. No, but this information will pull, pull over into the bill, which will result in a transaction. So that looks good. We're gonna say, I'm not gonna add any lines. This looks good down below. And so then we have their options of just approving or we can say we want to approve and add another. We also have the saving options. So smaller companies might just go directly to the approve. If you've got if you've got another kind of system, another kind of link in the internal controls, you might save the draft. And then we could have we could save it as a draft. Let's go ahead and do that and just go through the cycle and say it's saved as a draft. So now here it is as a draft. And then if I was to go back into it as a draft and then say, okay, now what I'm gonna do is move it to save and submit for approval. So I could just approve it from here, but no, I'm gonna go and save and submit for approval. Imagining I've got another step in my accounting process. And so now it's gonna be awaiting approval. 
So here it is awaiting approval. Still hasn't recorded anything to the financial statements, of course. We're just going through the bureaucratic system in our office here. And now we're going to say, okay, finally, I'm going to approve it. So I'm going to approve or approve and another. I'm just going to approve it. Boom, it has been approved. And so now I'm going to go back into my purchase orders. And so now it's in the approved area here. So there it is here. Now then from here, uh, I, I could then go into it and we could uh, con copy it over to a bill. So I could hit the drop down and say, I want to copy it to a bill, which we'll do next time. We'll focus in on the next bill next time, or I can hit the drop down and make a bill. And let's say I'm going to make a bill from AAA. It says up here, purchase order, blah, 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 is outstanding for this company. So I can, once again, kind of pull in the purchase order. It gives us that pop-up telling us, hey, there's a purchase order. So there's two ways we might do that. I think the more systematic way would usually be to say, okay, if I got a box of inventory with this thing I ordered, I would probably go to the purchase orders personally and then go to the approved items and then use this to create the bill, check the purchase order, make sure we got what we ordered and then copy the bill. But you can just go directly to the bill and type in the, uh, the AAA that you bought from the vendor or supplier and then pull in the information from the purchase order. Once again, no impact thus far on the financial statements. Next time we'll talk about linking and we'll go to the bill component and the only difference between the bill components, what we saw in the last time in the bill, well, there's a couple differences. One is that we're going to have the link between the purchase order to help create the bill. And two, now we're tracking the inventory in on it. So when I purchase that bill information, it's also going to track the inventory on a perpetual inventory system, both having it on the balance sheet as well as sub ledgers for what it is we purchased.